Now, before we go any further, I'd just like to say publicly, this is the single proudest moment of my life. There's still a sense of mystery when somebody makes a coin appear from nowhere. We were just trying to do it on a grand scale. The NFL and Magicom Entertainment present a Super Bowl halftime extravaganza. It's Bebop Bamboozle. Dan's vision was to create the most spectacular, largest Super Bowl halftime that had ever been seen. Over the course of 22 Super Bowls, things can get a little stale. Every year, the same big production companies would put on the same looking halftime. You really found very few name stars involved. It was more about filling the field with color and music, dancing snowflakes. By 1988, the NFL wanted to see if some fresh faces could bring the magic back to halftime. We brought in six or seven different production companies. Dan, because he's a magician, was totally different. This is our spirit bar. Now, every bar is known to have spirits, but ours are a little different. Let me show you what I mean. Spirits? My name is Dan Witkowski. I'm uh, president of a company called Magicom in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've heard our innovation labs called everything from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory to the Wizard of Oz's laboratory. We contacted the NFL and said we would like to present a concept for a show. Witkowski proposed a medieval spectacle filled with magic. And the first trick was played on NFL execs. About two weeks before the presentation, we received a letter from the NFL asking us to submit a written copy of the show we were proposing. Anybody who knows anything about entertainment knows that's like almost death. We actually drilled a hole through each one of the books and put a padlock through the book. They couldn't open the presentation until they came to the meeting. I was told the next day by one of the administrative assistants at the NFL that people were coming out of their offices and in the hallway saying, what is this? Where's the key? What's going on? And Commissioner Roselle actually attended our presentation, which is the only one of 20 presentations that I'm told he sat in on because he wanted to get his key. And he got it, and we, uh, I guess we got the, the deal. <laughs> As Super Bowl 23 approached, the show went presto changeo. Its setting became the fabulous 50s, and the medieval magic was scrapped for the world's biggest card trick. It would also be in 3D for television viewers who bought special glasses with six packs of soda. When the 3D element came into play on this, there was a tremendous amount of publicity. The first ever network broadcast in 3D. This is the greatest Super Bowl halftime I've ever seen. I told you I lie a lot. <laughs> this is the best halftime entertainment I've ever seen at the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Hosted by the immortal Elvis Presto. It's a magic show. We're going to give it kind of a 1950s theme. Well, we needed a lead magician. Starring at Prince of Presto Digitation, Elvis Presto. Presto. It was Elvis Presto. This journey is about creating a fulfilled, exciting life experience so that when the universe opens up and presents you with an opportunity that you had no idea was coming, you can embrace it. I'm Alex Cole. My wife, Terry, and I own Yo Yo Yogi, which is a yoga studio in Portland, Oregon. I started out as a singer, actor, dancer uh, back in the 70s. I was with Solid Gold, which was a music and dance show in the 80s. After Solid Gold, I moved into choreography. I got a gig to choreograph the Super Bowl. Reagan Patno was our, our lead, and he was perfect. I mean, he was like a blonde Elvis. He got a Lee Jeans commercial three days before the Super Bowl and decided to quit the Super Bowl and go do the Lee Jeans commercial. <laughs> so it was like, Okay, now what? You pick your car, Cole was the obvious choice to don Elvis Presto's golden jacket. 
he taped a few special 3D clips that would be rolled into the broadcast of the show, and then it was time to bebop bamboozle. There was a huge jukebox that I appear out of and then later go up in flames in. The big trick, though, was taking the whole stadium and turning it from seats and, and fans into these playing cards. There were four playing cards that actually came on the field, and they were huge. People, by their applause, were going to select a card. King of Hearts! Everyone selected the King of Hearts based on their applause, and that was legitimate. That actually could have been any one of the four. Was a King of Hearts and the card you chose? Only Mr. Presto knows. Prepare for my most mystifying feat. The cards you chose was only your seat. We asked everybody to take the seat cushion that they were sitting on and hold it up. Now hold up your cushion, surprise, surprise, right before your very eyes. And if you look in the stands, it's kind of hard to see, but the perimeter of the stadium actually forms a K with a heart in it, and on the field, we form the King of Hearts instantaneously. How did we know they were going to select the King of Hearts? How did we know? The rest of the show featured music and magic, trampolines, fire, a hundred motorcycles, and for 12 minutes, the man who wasn't supposed to be Elvis Presto was the biggest performer in the world. It almost feels like a dream, like you know that it was you know a movie I watched or it happened to somebody else. It was my last performance, last last time on stage. In a footnote to the halftime show, Joe Montana took the stage and made some magic of his own. But by that time, Elvis Presto had left the building. One of the most iconic games of all time, Joe doing what Joe does, uh, but I didn't get to see it. I, I was on a bus uh, heading back uh, to the hotel. The day after the Super Bowl, some critics were feeling less than enchanted. For the TV audience, I think we could have done a better job with the magic. We couldn't test the K of hearts. It's kind of hard to see. While I don't think it was our best effort, I think it delivered fun. And it seemed to usher in the days of using a performer as the centerpiece for the show. Today's stars of Super Bowl halftime can thank Elvis Presto whose spirit has found a new kind of magic in Portland, Oregon. Being in tune with the things that you can't see and you can't hear, and knowing that there is so much more to this universe than meets the eye, I was pressed I would appreciate what yoga has to offer. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>